Welcome back to the newest video, Soldier. Today, we're going over controls for NASB2. We're going to go over what buttons I use and how I think the game should be played in terms of mechanics that are on the controller and options that you have yourself to have the best controller scheme in this game. Right off the bat, I want to tell you guys that they did implement D-pad movement, so you can do either D-pad movement or custom movement within that realm and also just putting the left stick. I use left stick. I like to move almost like it's smash and I've done the same thing with multiverses. I don't have to usually change anything up. I don't like playing D-pad unless it's like Tekken or something. And I will say that I have my stuff set similarly to how I have it set in multiverses and also smash. So this is an amalgamation of all of those things put together to have the best move set and best button layout so that you can have the easiest time with your controls. To make this a little bit easier for you guys, I think I'm going to put a controller button layout for you guys to see what pattern it is. That way you guys don't have to worry as much about what it looks like and how different each control is. This way it's kind of almost universal for everybody. Obviously your light attack is your jab. This is basically what you do your tilts with. I put that on A, which is X button on PS5, which is the bottom button they didn't change the layouts to match what the controls do for each game so it's going to be dependent on you it'll be a little confusing if you are not used to what the control layouts are for each one i will say this is probably the same button you would use for jabbing like it is in smash with your gamecube controller and it's also the a button on xbox controller charge attack for me is actually the square button on my PS5 controller. If you wanted to use something like this for charge attack, I would recommend putting it on the, maybe the, one of the X or Y buttons on GameCube. If this is going to be a pro controller for you to use, I would say this is the Y button. The special attack button, similarly how it is in Smash, it would be the neutral B, or obviously if it's on different controls, we'll highlight it right here. This is where the button would be on your controller if it is different controllers, but this would be like the universal control list. I will say you can change a special attack to whatever you want on the triggers. That's also good. Some people use that in Smash, but what I do with the trigger button on right trigger, either that or left trigger, is the jump. Now, obviously, this is universal. All controllers have a right and left trigger, but I also use the Y button to jump as well. That way I can do IDJ. If you don't know what IDJ is, it is instant double jump. This makes it a lot easier to get your combos out because you don't leave your hands from the controller very often. Basically, your hands are going to be on the sticks at all times, and you don't have to leave your hand from the sticks to jump. Now, this is not a permanent solution as if you want to short hop and you want to do short hops in general, it's going to be easier to do it on the Y button or any button that's on the controller interface in the front. But if you do the right trigger jump, you just got to keep in mind, it's almost insanely tough to actually get a short hop out of a right trigger jump. You basically have this jump to do full hops and to help you do instant double jumps. Now, obviously, the block button can be on anything you want. It could be on, on Xbox. It could be different than it is on GameCube. But for me, I have it on left trigger that helps me wave dash so this is your wave dash button on top of it being a block button right so if you jump in the air you air dodge with this right that's sort of my same layout that i have for multiverses the same exact way you would get off the ground and wave dash it would be left trigger for me and you can do it with different buttons but i would say it's not as nice and it's not as easy because you need to leave your hands from the sticks the whole point of this layout is so that you can keep your hands on the sticks so you can always do aerials and you can always do other things that you need to do including blocking and air dodging now the grab button is going to be the same exact button you use for gamecube as long as well as every other thing for me i use it the same on every layout if i wanted to use xbox controller it's gonna be the right bumper as well i will say a ps5 controller feels the nicest xbox controller feels really bulky and the gamecube controller is not ergonomic so it hurts your hands at a certain amount of times and i really do think that the grab button is universal i think it should be on right bumper but if you like it on left bumper there's no problem with that because the next button i want to show you guys is the slime button this button is really important right the reason why it's on the left bumper for me because you need in order to slime cancel you need to have a button free to do it you can put it on any other button if you want but for me a left bumper is really good obviously on gamecube controller there is no left bumper so you have to be really careful about where you place this because it's going to change everything for you if you have it in a bad spot it's going to be harder for you to slime cancel but for me the reason why i also have it right here is because the block button being also on left trigger the reason why you would have these two buttons on the same exact side is because it's easier for you to just burst slime bursting is a crucial part of this game and you need to know how to slime burst in order to not die at high percent or even from combos that you want to just get out for free from. Obviously, these can all be different depending on who you are, what you like to play, and also what controller you use. But I will say this is a layout that I think works the best. And obviously, the top buttons don't really matter. Now, if you want to go even more in depth into the options, double tapping for dash is something that you could do, but I do not like that. I understand if you want to walk, it's easier to walk. But if you want to double tap for dash, it's a little bit harder because then you have to always input that every time you want to dash. 
which is not very useful for me. It's actually more inputs, which makes it worse for me. Double tap for fast falls is actually something that's in multiverses. It's not really something you see in Smash, but you flick the stick twice downward to initiate a fast fall, which I also don't like. Typically, you fast fall by just pushing down whenever you're in the, the apex of your jump or whenever you want to just fast fall, you just push down basically whenever you're in the air. And it's worse if you have to double tap it because you, if you don't double tap it, you will not fast fall. You'll just float there slowly till you hit the ground. Tap jump is everyone's hated thing. Everybody hates it. They want to turn it off. That makes their lives easier. If you play melee, you know that you can't turn this off. It's actually a thing that is there because it's easier to do combos in melee when you have tap jump on. But I know a lot of new heads do not like tap jump. And I will say that tap jump is annoying to a degree if you're not used to it. But if you are used to it, it is really good because you can IDJ a lot better and you don't have to keep your hands on the Y button or like the triangle button and you don't have to worry about that as much. So tap jump is a good thing to have on, but I will say majority of smashers will want to have it off and that is because everybody doesn't know how to control it, right? And if you played melee, it's a lot easier for you than it is for a lot of new heads because a lot of tap jumpers prefer it because it's easier to IDJ and you don't have to be perfect with it. You can actually just tap up when you jump and so it's basically like a thing where you can instantly double jump whenever you feel like it but the problem is, is that if you don't have the discipline or you don't have the understanding of how top jump works it will make you jump on accident and you will lose your double jump and that's not a good thing now i will say that if you're not used to it probably don't use it because you will get mad about the game but if you prefer high skill barrier things that actually help you understand it. if you play d-pad too it would be easy on d-pad i feel like because you're not going to ever input up on accident so it might be even better the short hop macro is pressing an attack and jump simultaneously to perform a short hop aerial now this is something that's actually in Smash Ultimate. I don't think it's in Multiverses or Roa. I'm not so sure on Roa, but it is in this game as well as Smash. So I will say that the short hop macro is good if you want to use it because if you're bad at short hopping, this is going to cover that up. But the problem is that if you're bad at short hopping, this isn't going to do anything for you if you're actually trying to short hop. Like if you want to do a tomahawk grab where you just empty hop, land without doing anything than grabbing somebody, this will make it harder for you because you're not going to be used to short hopping. If anything, I would say learn how to short hop before you do anything because if you do this macro, it's just going to be annoying, right? If you want to do a full hop aerial, it's always going to come out as a short hop. So it's going to mess you up if you're not used to this layout. And I also agree that if you think that it's better to have, it's good to have if you like it, but I will say it makes it sort of limiting because you need to be more perfect than just using a macro that will make it so that you're used to doing the wrong inputs anyway. This macro is good if you're new, but I think it's a crutch if you are good at the game or if you are good at movement in other games. This will actually be a crutch for you. Now, obviously, you can change the aerials, right? The light attacks or charge attacks. If you wanted to do a charge attack in the air, it makes sense if you were on to do this, but this means that you have to use whatever button you put for your jab. That means your light attack will have to be used for aerials, and the aerials you use with the right stick will no longer be light attacks. Now, this is unique because not a lot of games do this. I think Multiverses has this, but Smash Ultimate does not have the ability, obviously, to charge attack in the air. I definitely think it's good to have either, but the problem is that if you want to do an aerial and not a charge attack, you're going to be locked into always doing the charge attack. That's something that you should have on a different button, just so you can have the differentiator and not have to feel like you're locked into just doing charge attacks. Now, the grounded versions, obviously, this is the same thing as like in Smash, where it's Smash Stick versus, you know, Tilt Stick. Light attacks, charge attacks, same thing on the ground. They're different. I think it's better to have tilts obviously on the ground and obviously in the air to have light attacks because if you have the discipline to know that your charge button is somewhere you can press it easily it's a lot easier for you to stay grounded and actually do the things you want to do and if you wanted to do an f charge you want to do a down charge it's a little bit easier to have a button set to that because that way you don't have to worry about accidentally doing the wrong input if you're not automatically good with tilting with the a button like if you're playing smash and you're trying to use your tilt stick with the a button f tilting and down tilting all the time manually this is a way to skip it being manual so you don't have to keep your hands moving all the time the reason why this layout is really good is because of the fact that you never have to leave your hands from the sticks your hands are always going to be in the left stick your hands are always going to be on the right stick essentially all play styles could afford to experiment with this layout and obviously yes i'll have the buttons on the screen for the controllers and where they are because it's different for GameCube. Every other controller is similar to PS5 controllers, Xbox controllers, except for GameCube controllers. That's gonna be a little bit more unique for you to have to figure out because it's different for everybody and not everybody likes the buttons being on the same exact thing. And I will say that it is easier if you understand how the control schemes work in multiple controllers. So you can find out which controllers suit you best since this 
obviously is all controllers put together and I even think that there's actually some things people play with keyboard as well that's something that they have to figure out because it's all comfortability for you if you like to join our scene make sure you like subscribe hit the bell button so if you want to see some more things in the future I'll see you next time in the next video let me know what you guys want to see and we'll do it up then goodbye soldier Ooh, we ride